we should see oops i guess i gotta save that first there we go part one and two unsolved okay i think we're ready to actually start working on the puzzle yeah let's just kick off day one here day one secret entrance the elves have good news and bad news the good news is that they've discovered project management yay this has given them tools they need to prevent their usual christmas emergency for example they now know that the north pole decorations need to be finished soon so that their other critical tasks can start on time the bad news is is that they've realized they have different emergency according to their resource planning none of them have any time left to decorate the north pole to save Christmas, the elves need you to fi finish decorating the North Pole by December 12th. Can collect stars by solving puzzles. Yes, yes. You arrive at the secret entrance to the North Pole base, ready to start decorating. Unfortunately, the password seems to have been changed. Uh-oh, are we doing MD5s again? So now you can't get in. A document taped to the wall helpfully explains. Due to new security protocols, the password is locked in the safe below. <laughs> Please see that document for the new combination. A uh, safe is a dial all with only an arrow on it around the dial are numbers zero through 99 in order. As you turn the dial, it makes a small click noise as it reaches each number. That's document, your puzzle input, contains a sequence of rotations, one per line, which tells you how to open the safe. The rotation starts with an L or R, which indicates the rotation should be to the left toward lower numbers or to the right toward higher numbers. Then the rotation has a distance value, which indicates how many clicks the dial should be rotated in that direction. So if the dial were pointing at 11, a rotation of R8 would cause it to go 19. After that, a rotation of L19 would cause it to point at zero. Because the dial is a circle, turning the dial left from zero, one click makes it point at 99. Right, right, and right it goes to zero. Okay, so if the dial were pointing at five, rotation of L10 is 95, R5 is zero. Right, got it. Dial starts by pointing at 50. Okay. You could follow the instructions, but your recent required official North Pole Secret Entrance Security Training Seminar <laughs> taught you that the safe is actually a decoy. The actual password is the number of times the dial is left pointing at zero after any rotation in the sequence. For example, suppose the attached document contained the following. Okay. All right, so we're pointing at zero three different times at the end of each rotation. Because the dial points at zero total three times during this process, the password in the example is three. Okay, so let's get our puzzle input. I don't have my um, my get input things uh, set up, so we're just going to do copy paste. And I forget how I name these things. Oh, okay. Um, make their input and vim input twenty twenty five oh one dot text. I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to do it this way. There. And it ends in L, starts with L45 and ends in L35. Just want to make sure I got all, oh, wow. How long is this input? I just go to the end. Yeah, L35. Okay. 40, oh, it's 40.99. Okay. That's, okay. 4099 instead of 4100. That's fine. Okay, so not source main. We want to run, we want to edit. Don't have, oh, I do. Okay, so let's let's go here. So parse, let lines is AOC lib. Oh, look at that. It's already set up for 2025. Um, lines, parse lines. Use AOC lib line parser. Really? What is this? I don't remember doing this, but I must have done it at some point. What is this doing? It's calling, it just calls parse. Oh, it's a trait, parse lines. So I have to implement line parser. For T. Okay. All right. We can do this. Um, will it let me do it this way? Yes, import AOC lib line parser. Okay. All five parse lines of nothing call. No, no. So now what we need to do is implement. Oh, there's no data. Let's let's make data. Let's make this a down here, enum rotation or a turn. Let's call it turn and then left with um let's use eye size just to just to keep things simple and right eye size. And that way we can we can subtract 
and add stuff that way. So now each one of these will be parsed into a, a turn. And so our struct is going to contain data, which is going to be uh, a vec of turn. And now I can't do that. Okay, so now I need to implement turn from stir. And I can do that, import that, implement missing members. There is nothing. And then this is going to be an okay. Oh, uh, let's split it apart. So the first is going to be an L or an R. <clears throat> Let is left, sure, is going to be S. Maybe this way, S0.1 equals L. And this tells us whether it's a left or a right. And then let amount is going to be s1 dot dot bars i size unwrap and then we're going to say okay if is left turn left by amount else turn right by amount i'm over engineering this i know but this is part of the fun of rust Okay, so we can now parse these things out. We should be able to print them. If I turn on debugging here, print lin, debug out self data. Yeah, we have left, left 45 for the first entry and was it left 35? Yep, left 35. So they're all there, perfect. So part one is gonna be, we care about how many times we reach position zero. This map says, I love over engineering. Me too. I enjoy it. Um, maybe it'll come in handy for part two. I don't know what part two is going to be, but maybe it'll be handy for that. If we just have a count or a position, right? A setting, let's call it a setting and starts at 50. And we're going to loop, uh, not loop. We're going to say for rotation in self data in fact we can rename self data now call it turns there we go for turn and turns match turn still match arms if we're turning left by some amount then we're going to change the setting equals setting minus amount rem euclid 100, right? Because the dial has 100 turns on it. And this is just setting setting plus amount um, mod 100. When we're adding, it's fine. When we're subtracting, we have to do the, the weird version of it. And then we're going to say if, oh, we need a counter. Uh, if the setting ended up being zero, then we're going to say counter plus equals one. Right? And then we're going to say, AOC lib output count. Oh, counter. Uh, and that didn't like that because, oh, I put a semicolon there. And it doesn't like this because I have a typo. 989. Let's see if that's right. Hey, that's the right answer. Huzzah. All right, check in with Clippy. And one of, th one of the things I like about AOC is it doesn't show you part two right away. Um, it, everybody codes shows you the part two right away. And so you're kind of like, ah, there's this tension of you're sneaking a peek before you should kind of thing. Um, oh, I should have, uh, before I solved part one, I should have done the, the whole thing. Okay, let's do it now. Git status, git add cargo lock. Um, creates AOC 2025. Oh, I have, I modified 2016. I wonder what I was doing there. Let's, let's, let's take a look at that. Oh, because I was just looking at those three puzzles. That's right. So we can say get check out that. We can always do that again if we need to. Um, creates AOC 2025. All right. That was part one. Let's see part two. You're sure that's the right password, but the door won't open. 
You knock, but nobody answers. You build a snowman while you think, yeah, of course, as you do. As you're rolling the snowballs for your snowman, you find another security document that must have fallen into the snow. Due to, a new, due to newer security protocols, please use password method, whatever this is, until further notice. Actually, these look like, they are ASCII letters, right? Four, hex, four is 64. So three is um, C, and then 12 is uh, an L, nine is I, so C L I O and then C and this is probably K. Um, eleven is eleven is K. Yeah. So password method click until further notice. Remember from the training seminar method, click means you're actually supposed to count the number of times any click causes the dial to point to zero, regardless of whether it happens during the rotation or at the end of one. Ah, okay. All right. Using password method click. What is the password to open the door? Um, there's probably a really clever way to do it. Um, but I'm not clever. So we're going to say let dir comma amount equals. All right, we're going to, we're going to get the direction and the amount we're going to do, and then we're going to, oh, and then we need this mutable. And then we're going to say while amount is greater than zero. <laughs> Bear with me. This is this is what I'm doing. Setting plus equals dir. No, setting equals setting plus dir. Ram Euclid 100. If setting equals zero, counter plus equals one. Um, there's only there's four thousand, and the numbers don't go that high. So I'm. I'm sure this is fine. There's probably some really clever way we could use division and make sure we don't hit any edge cases. But brute force seems like the way to go here. Um, oh, it doesn't know what type. Ah, let's just make these all SSs. Oh. Oh, I forgot to... Good, good thing it didn't compile. I forgot to subtract from amount. Um, can I do that and get a amount? Good. And then I can just say amount minus equals one. Um, okay. I mean, sure. But then I can't mutate it, right? Can I just put this here and it'll complain that I can't mutate it? Yeah. So let's say let mut amount equals amount. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Uh, let's hit run. 5941. Is that right? That's the right answer. Yay. Okay. But I'm not happy with this. Is why why can't we extract this as mutable? This is oh, because this is a reference to an I size, and I want a, a just an I size. So I should be able to say mute amount and then put stars here and get rid of this line. Yeah, okay. Just gotta love it. All right, I, I mean, this, I, I promise this would be a quick stream. This is a quick stream, so 